Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargard.com and in this video we are going to look at how to create columns in Microsoft Word. Now to do this I've got a simple two page document uh, which is one of the course outlines I use for a VBA course. Uh, it's currently going on two pages with this big bulleted list of uh, the topics that are going to be covered. I want to use columns to bring this onto one page, nice and neat, cover up this blank white space on the right hand side. So we're going to look at how to create them, how to insert them, but then also a few settings that I can tweak and adjust. Now let me start with this first little bullet point. I want to do the same to those. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight the range that I want to apply columns to. So I'm going to highlight those bullet points. Whenever you highlight bullet points, don't highlight from the bullet. You may get away with it, but you may also make a mistake from there. So you want to highlight the paragraphs. The bullets are just formatting. Ignore them. I will click on my Layout tab at the top. Now I'm using Word 2016. So you may find columns on a tab called Page Layout on the version that you use. Mine is simply on one called Layout. And I'll see a Columns button in this, this page setup group. In here I'm going to put it into two columns but there are other options there. Uh, you've got one, two or three and then you can probably make out in the picture the slight differences in the width. I don't know if you can tell in my screen but if you look on your screen that'll be a lot clearer. I'm just going to choose two from here and it formats that range of paragraphs into two columns. So easy as that job is done in the middle of this document here, middle of this page. Now because that content already existed and I highlighted it and I told Word what I wanted to do it's all fa you know, fairly straightforward. What Word has done though is it's had to insert two section breaks for that to happen. Two continuous section breaks. Now I don't know if you watch enough familiar with what section breaks are, they're an extremely useful powerful tool allowing you to try to sorry apply some page formatting to either parts of a page or to specific pages of a document something like that whereas normally page formatting like margins and columns and uh, portrait landscape headers of footers these will initially apply themselves to the entire document now to view these I could click my home tab and the show hide button sitting about halfway along. And if I turn that on, I can see the section break continuous above. And it doesn't say it, but this section break down here after use events with your macros. So there's a section break before and after it, sectioning off that piece of content so that I can do some page layout stuff to it, like columns, and not affect the other parts of the document. Now Word did that for me because it was already there. If it wasn't, you may have to bring these section breaks in yourself. I'm going to turn that show hide button off. I'm not interested in those section breaks. Um, if I delete them, I will lose my columns. I just wanted to show you that they were there taken care of by Word. Now I'm going to apply a columns to this other load down here. I'm going to highlight what is a macro all the way down to the bottom much bigger list this and I'm going to go back to layout columns and two for a two column effect immediately I'm on one page absolutely beautiful it's not always going to line up as neat as this it depends on your paragraphs it depends how much content you've got how big is each paragraph it may not look so pretty now there may be some of you watching this uh, or you may speak to some of your colleagues at work or something and not everyone's a big fan of columns. The easiest way of getting this two column effect like this side by side is to use a table. It's the easiest way of doing it. A table with two columns, get the data in there. Tables are very easy to control by inserting rows and columns and adjusting the width and that and then turning off the borders. It's the easiest way of doing it but not always what you want. Classic example of using columns is in stuff like newsletters and in creating brochures. This kind of stuff where you want the flow 
from one column onto the second column. And a table won't do that for you. They are so rigid. I mean, that's their benefit in some points. But in the case, if you wanted that flow, a big negative. And columns is the winner in that little arm wrestle. Now, let's imagine that you're looking at what they've done here. You're loving the flow of it. But you're thinking, why does this section, this interactive code section, start at the bottom of the first column? Why doesn't that start at the top of the second one? That would be more logical, it would be easier to read, look better. So what we can do here is I can click to the left of that header, interactive code, and I will go to my layout tab, click on breaks, and I'm going to insert a column break. So by inserting a column break, that will force the content onto the next column. So now it looks like this. I've got a little bit of a gap there. You may think, oh, actually, it looked better how it was. Let's move it back. <laughs> um, or maybe you can move this paragraph in there or something like that. Depends if that's important to be on the end of this, this list. But by doing that, we have maybe broken up the flow, making it easier to read, you know, look a bit neater. That was the idea there. So column break, very similar to page breaks, but force it into the next column if you're going to use this stuff. Now to finish off in this video, just wanted to look at some other settings we have. If we click on the columns button again in the layout tab and click on more columns, we'll get a full complement of settings. There's not a great deal you can do with this stuff, but the two that I'm interested in mentioning, first of all, there's a checkbox to put a line in between the columns. If you are doing this to create some kind of booklet, some kind of brochure, it can be quite handy to have a line so that it's something to, to fold along or to cut along or something like that. But some people just like to have that line for, you know, for aesthetic purposes. There's also a checkbox where I can turn off the equal width option and start playing around with the width of each column. And if we increase this first one, notice how the second one is dropping. I can maybe decrease the space in the middle. Is there too much space in between the two columns? So you can adjust those settings at your leisure, you know, getting it how you wish. You may have stuff like pictures and tables in these columns as well, and they may need a bit more space on their side. So being equal is not necessarily the what you're after here. Or one of the columns may be smaller because it's a kind of sidebar for adverts and you know less important stuff rather than the actual content of what you, your publication or whatever you're creating. I'm just going to cancel that for now, happy with the equal width, happy with my one page uh, document with my content now, covering up the space. Um, columns did that job for me, they're not the only way. You may hear some disgruntled people at work um, or others who use Word who are not big fans of them. They are a bit more difficult to control as well, but they do get that flow between the columns which you might be looking for. And once you get used to them, they're not, not maybe as bad as what some people may, uh, may make you understand. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergarga.com.